Passive safety is helping people when they're in a crash. Active safety is trying to avoid the crash to begin with. And, you know, so we, we do that with putting sensors on cars like radars and cameras to see other cars, see lane markings. But what we're going to show you today is like a, using wireless technology, a modified version of Wi-Fi together with GPS. So your car is, can kind of send out a message that says, hey, I'm a car and here's my speed, here's my position, here's my, where I'm going. It's like a little tweet that your car would send out 10 times a second to any car around it. And your car would start receiving those messages from all the other cars that were equipped around that were sending it to you. And then your car, once it started receiving messages, would be able to kind of say, I see this car in front of me. I see a car to the side. I see a car coming at me at the intersection. And as a driver, you wouldn't even realize that was happening, except if you made a mistake or if somebody wasn't paying attention, you'd get a warning that said, hey, look out, something's about to happen. Cool. So it's really low cost technology, like unlike radars and cameras, it's like based on Wi-Fi and GPS and our cars already have GPS and they already have basic Wi-Fi. So, it, but it, it does even more than a radar or camera can do, but it requires that all cars be equipped. And so we're working with other car makers to get standards for what messages will be sent. And then we're working with the Department of Transportation to get devices that could be fitted on cars, even existing cars could be retrofitted to send out these kind of messages. Okay. Um, so th we're going to show you some scenarios of how this technology works. And the first scenario is what we call EBL for Emergency Electronic Brake Light. And the idea is, imagine you're driving down the road and you're behind a big truck but three or four cars up ahead, there's a car that has to brake suddenly, and so it brakes really hard. And as a, you wouldn't know it until that truck in front of you started to brake, so you get into these chain reaction kind of crashes. But with this technology, you get a wireless message from that car way up in front right away, and so you could react even before the truck reacted. So what we're gonna show you is we're behind a blue car, but in front of him there's a black car that's gonna hit the brakes real hard, and we'll get a warning about it. Okay. okay guys, three, two, one. So what you'll see is that we'll, we'll get the warning even before the blue car reacts. Three, two, one, break. Wow. Good. Um, the, so how did that how how did that happen so fast? The that car is sending out a message 10 times a second that's saying, here's my uh, speed, here's my position, here's my brake status. Next, the idea of this technology is that it's really low cost, although really powerful. And so what we're going to show you now is like we're using a single frequency GPS, a really low cost automotive grade GPS, L1 frequency. And so... Um, but we're able to place cars relative to us. And so what we're going to show you is we're going to drive by that blue car. He's going to be in one lane over and we're not going to react to him because he's not in our path, even though, um, you know, we're using a, the same kind of GPS that might be in a smartphone because we really need like relative positioning. So a lot of the common errors cancel out. So it's rel you know, we may, we may, we may both be off by a certain amount, but relative to each other, we know where we are. Okay. Three, three, two, three, two, one. So we're, we're driving along and the car's in one lane over and he's not going to trigger a warning for us. And see, the idea is that you put a radar on a car, it reacts to all the other cars right away. When you put this on your car, it only reacts to other <laughs> equipped vehicles. And so we want to get every vehicle, every motorcycle, every bus, every truck, every pedestrian outfitted with this technology. That's our ultimate vision. And so it's real important that we keep the cost really low. How did you sense that he was just 10 feet over? 
Well, he's sending us his position based on his GPS. We know our position based on our GPS, and we take a difference, and a lot of the common errors cancel out so we can see that how far off he is. So just using automotive grade, low-cost GPS, we were able to do that. How accurate is the GPS in a consumer grade vehicle? Um, it's, in an absolute sense, it's about five meters, but in a relative sense, we can get it down to less than one meter. And that's the key for us. It's just relative positioning that we need. Okay, the, the scenario we're going to show you now is a scenario where you imagine you're driving down the highway, you're following a car, but way up ahead in, in your lane there's a stopped vehicle that's broken down. And you, but you can't see it because the car in front of you is, is blocking your view. So. Uh, all of a sudden that car moves out of the way and suddenly that stop car is revealed. But And even with a radar that would be a really challenging problem because the radar sees what's in front of you. But with this, the, the stop vehicle is going to be sending out wireless messages and even before that blue car moves out of the way, we'll get a warning that tells us that there's a stop car up in front of us. Great. Ready? Three, two, one. Driving along, um, both those cars are sending out messages. But even before that blue car reacted, we got that warning. Good. Um, the next scenario we're going to show you is um, this technology is 360 degrees. It's just one 360 degree antenna on the roof that's sending out these messages. Uh, cars already have something called blind spot warning that tells using a radar that can tell you if there's something in your blind spot. But with this technology, we can look further back and we can do a, a use case called lane change warning. And what that does is it says, m imagine that you're about to change lanes and there's nobody in your blind spot, but further back there's a motorcycle coming up really quickly and it wouldn't be a good time for you to change lanes. This technology can look further back and say, once you put your turn signal on and warn you that, no, don't change lanes right now. How long has this technology been in the works? We started working on, the FCC allocated the spectrum in the 1990s, 1998, and then in 2002, the auto industry guys got together and said, we really need to figure out how we're going to use this. We need to come up with a standard for what messages we're going to send, how often we're going to send it. And we're getting really close to next year doing a model deployment in a city where there'll be thousands of equipped vehicles, that trucks and buses and intersections all sending out these messages. And then 2013, is the, the goal is for NHTSA to start a regulation that would require this on all new vehicles and maybe in consumer electronics would start building devices that would be able to be retrofitted into existing cars because everybody sees the, the potential. Um, okay. Go ahead. So we're going to... Um, go ahead, Art. Three, two, one. So we're going to be driving along and then he's going to put his turn signal on but that blue car is going to be coming over front on the side. And even though he wasn't in our blind spot, now he is in our blind spot, we got a warning from him, but the first warning we got was because he was like coming up so quickly. The next scenario we're going to show you is, is the typical forward collision warning scenario. It's the most common kind of like crash, you know, you're just not paying attention, the car in front of you is going slow or you're tailgating and suddenly you're in a near crash situation. In three, two, one. The, the HMI that we're using, the human machine interfaces. That HMI that in front of our okay. that sound and that heads up display with the red lights is already in production at Ford. Based on radar technology, we're just using the same driver interface for these scenarios. Yeah. So um, are you seeing a red bar come up here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a, it's, there's some red, the reason we use that is as, you know, if, as a driver you hear that sound, it's an urgent sound, and then you look up and you see red lights, and that really instinctively tells you, hey, I need to brake, which is what we want the driver to do. This scenario is like, imagine you're on a rural two-lane road, and you're following somebody, 
but he's going slow and you decide you want to pull out and pass, but there's a car coming at you in that lane. You got so a jogger you, you in the get into a head-on crash if you try to pull out. Um, and so you, when you put your turn signal on to indicate that you're about to do that, you get a warning. Go ahead, Art. Oh, we have a gentleman here jogging. We want to make sure he's... <laughs> Is there a sensor for that? <laughs> well, if he, if he had one of these sensors. Okay. In three, two, one. So, we're about to pass. We put on our turn signal. So you were trying to signal that you wanted to pass yeah. and they warned you that a car was coming. Yeah, we were going we to pull out to a lane where he was coming. Um, The scenario we're going to show you now is imagine you're at an intersection and this truck was parked over here, but you were going to pull out and you just didn't know that there was somebody coming across that intersection. So you start creeping out and you suddenly you get a warning. Okay. In three, two, one. So we start pulling out, it goes yellow, and then red to tell us, hey, there's a car coming. Now that doesn't seem to allow enough reaction time to do anything. I mean, What's the proximity set up for the yellow and red warnings? You know, we basically set up the timings here just for demo purposes, okay. just to kind of illustrate this. You know, we, we've done a lot more human factors work to say, you know, when do you really give warnings to people in these reactions? But we're going to be doing driver a lot, a lot of driver clinics later this year where we put, you know, people of different ages and genders into these cars to really kind of understand how to give them warnings and when to give them warnings. This, this scenario is really maybe the most dramatic. Imagine you're coming up to an intersection, that truck is parked there, and you've got a green light, and you're just barreling through that intersection, but somebody violates from the right. They, they have a red light, but they keep coming through. You can't see them, and you're about to kind of meet them in an unfortunate way right in the center of the intersection. But the system is getting wireless messages from that other driver, and it's going to tell you, hey, you need to stop because something's even though you, the light is green. Now, what would it tell the other driver as well? It would tell him to stop too. Okay. So, you know, he's getting messages from us. And, um, and, and if the intersection was equipped, he'd be also getting messages from the intersection saying, hey, the light is red. What are you doing? Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Go ahead. In three, two, one. So, we're driving along. The light is green. We think, you know, we're going to go straight ahead. But even before we could see him, we got a warning. And the idea is that, you know, even if we had like a lot of sensors on the car, lasers and radars and cameras, we wouldn't have seen that scenario because of the truck blocking it. Wireless technology is the only technology we know of that can really help drivers in those in that situation. Interesting. And so, like I say, you know, we're going to do a model deployment with other car makers. There'll be thousands of cars equipped with this like sometime next year, and then we're gonna hope to go to a regulation after that. So other car makers have a similar system or you guys are licensing it too? Um, I, no, we've been working with other car makers to get the standards in place. So they have similar technology and, you know, because we kind of recognize it's a cooperative technology that every car has to have. You know, the way we give warnings, when we give warnings, the applications we do are different than other car makers, but we all agree on the messages over the air that we're gonna send you. From each other. Which car makers are you guys working with? Um, right now, it's Ford, General Motors, Honda, Nissan, Toyota, uh, Volkswagen, Audi, Mercedes, Hyundai, and Kia are all working together to kind of bring this technology. And, and we're also starting to work with truck, bus, truck manufacturers, heavy truck, bus manufacturers, motorcycle people. So our hope is to, when we do this model deployment next year to have all those kind of vehicles equipped. Is there a standard name for this technology that you guys are? Yeah, it's, 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 it's you know, the basic, it's a variation of Wi-Fi called DSRC for dedicated short range communication. And, you know, it goes by the name of V2V, vehicle to vehicle communication. What's the range of one node? Um, it's 300, three to 500 meters, um, you know, 
uh, you're sending out a message and that's enough for safety. Because you can cover that ground pretty quickly when you're traveling at highway speeds. Yeah, but like you actually don't want to get it to be much greater than that because what happens is the channel gets congested. If, if you've got a large freeway and there's, it, there's a lot of cars and they're all sending out messages over a long distance, you know, you, you ever get to a conference room where everybody's using Wi-Fi and the Wi-Fi gets real slow? You know, there's only a certain mm -hmm. bandwidth right. and everybody's trying to use. And so three to 500 meters is really the all you need. And it, if you had more than that, you'd get into congestion problems. What, what do you think this will add to the cost of a car? You know, like we, we're selling like a forward-looking radar for like $1,200 that does adaptive cruise control and FCW. This is going to be much less because it's based on commercial technology, GPS. We don't have the volumes for automotive radar high enough to really bring the cost down. But here we're using like our cars already have GPS. We don't need to add another GPS receiver. Our cars already have basic Wi-Fi, and this is just a version of that. So the cost is really low. When can we expect to see it out in the public? How many well, years? Well, we're going to do this model deployment in 2012. And then um, NHTSA said they would start a regulation. Uh, they would start the process of developing a regulation in 2013. And so we expect it'll take a few years, but maybe in five years from now, we expect to see the first cars equipped with this technology. Basically, people use this wireless stuff in their lives every day, and we're just saying, let's just bring it into the car and look at what we can do with it. And you know, our focus has been safety, but safety isn't the only thing you can do with it. You can do tolling, you can download DVDs, you can kind of do mobility applications, environmental applications, all kinds of you know capabilities through a, a high bandwidth uh, communication channel. Yeah, if you if you do a, a Google search and search for something called IntelliDrive, um, you'll come up with a bunch of articles. Uh, there's a U.S. Department of Transportation has a part called RITA, R-I-T-A, and they have a website all about this stuff too.